name things. Yeah. Flackers? Yeah, you've got them called flackers. I, I think they are. Name <laughs> things. How cool is this? Welcome yeah. to Toronto Comic Con. Yeah. How do you set up this show as spoiler free? Tell us a little bit about it. Um, well, I guess you saw a little bit of it there, but um, it sort of starts out with Sarah, the, the lead character that I play, and she's coming back from a life that she's wanting to kind of close the door on. And she's made a lot of mistakes, she's lived um, kind of rough uh, on the streets, and she's kind of trying to get back on the straight and narrow, but um, the first thing she does is witness a woman st uh, kill herself on the train platform who looks exactly like her. So. Sarah being a little bit um, morally ambiguous, which is what I absolutely adore about her, because she's not a good guy, you know, she's, she's kind of way more complicated than that, and uh, way more dark than that, and uh, she takes this as an opportunity to close the door on her past and kind of open the door on this new opportunity um, by stealing the woman's purse and assuming her identity. And that's kind of all I can say. Um, from there, she sort of falls headfirst into this mystery of who am I, uh, which is something we can all relate to and I think is, is a, a theme that resonates with me nowadays, for sure. And, uh, you know, the, the, the idea of, uh, of identity and of multiplicity and all this stuff and, like, who are these other women? And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's kind of the spoiler-free... I think that's the... That's, how else do you... Well, we can say, I, with the fact to me, actually, now we've been talking about how many. Yeah, and Felix is, or uh, Jordan, is Felix a, a good guy or a bad guy? Because I've, I've met you a little bit in person now, and as a person, you're a terrible guy. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a character. I'm an awful person, actually. I told Teddy that he couldn't look me in the eye the whole panel. Oh, you did it! I've already I messed did. that up! I've already messed it up. Thanks a lot for that. So tell us about Felix. I feel like none of the characters really, and what something kind of cool about it, and, you know, it's not like cardboard cutout, oh, these are the good guys, these are the bad guys, and it's the eternal war, you know, good versus evil. It's not about that. These are not necessarily good people. They're not necessarily bad people. They're sort of just human. They're... I'm sure there's a real, actual, like, literary term, anti-hero, or... Mm -hmm. The writer-creators, Graham and John, they have such an understanding and appreciation for narrative that they start to bend the rules of the sci-fi genre and bend the rules of traditional narrative, which is really cool. And so Felix is, um, he's Sarah's foster brother. They were fostered together in the UK by a woman named Mrs. S. And uh, they, they came over to North America under somewhat, I think we can say under somewhat mysterious circumstances. Nobody really knows, but you'll find out. Um, and uh, they, Felix is the yin to Sarah's yang. They are, uh, they're each other's everything. They're, they're each other's confidant, uh, really the only people that the other trusts. And uh, as far as the kind of, Felix is um, the proverbial showman. He's an artist. And everything is kind of a, an art project. Everything's a, a theatrical production. He's very over the top, which is very fun to play. Do you uh, ground him like completely, like the theatricality. I just love him. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you know, it's it's a, a brilliant character because it's so grounded in real defenses that people have. You know, that theatricality. Well, that was in the, what we were saying before. Is like it's always fun to to look at a person, you know, we see the hair, we see the clothes, and we, we judge people like that on a daily basis, what you, what you look like. But it's, and Felix is, um, you know, there's a lot of hair and makeup and clothing, and, but it's so fun to explore the person that lives beneath that. And, you know, Tat does this as well with, with her characters. It's, um, we all experience the same 360 degrees of emotion, uh, and as much as we might it, it might manifest differently. We, we all wear different clothing. We all speak with different accents, but we're all human. We're not set in the future. We're not set in some mystical city a hundred years in the future or a thousand years in the future where all this stuff is happening. We're set in the here and now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's present. It's rooted. And it's possible. And that's kind of the scariest part of it all. Uh, it's possible. It's very reflective, I think, of two of like the world nowadays, you know, with Instagram and Facebook and all this stuff, we put out a certain identity into the world, a certain story about who we are. Yeah. And so often it's kind of not exactly, you know, it's kind of a one-dimensional. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm always partying and eating the greatest brunches, but like, <laughs> usually I'm just sitting on like the couch, like wondering right. what I'm gonna Instagram next. You know? <laughs> so probably about brunch and partying. Probably about more. brunch and partying. Yeah. Um, I tell everybody I go to the gym. Yeah, uh, they're always a lot. Are you lying? You, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're lying. 
I mean, and it is, you're just playing. In the end, like you're, you're just playing under these very bizarre parameters. You're playing pretend, and, and when you feel so comfortable with someone, when you trust someone so much that you can explore, it, it's magical. And you know, the, all the executives in the background just kind of faded away, and, and we just, we played, and then we did. I knew, I was like trying to reach for her as I'm leaving the door. I'm like, you're amazing. <laughs> did you know that voice? I didn't know that voice. That, that voice was created during the shooting. <laughs> Well, we greet each other. Ah, oh, it's so nice to see you. It's a very professional set. <laughs> we're, we're artists, is what we are. It's yeah. really what, um, what it's really about. That's that's a bit of Felix. Well, this is a bit of Felix, yeah. So, um, <laughs> no, but it was. Uh, I if, if you talk, sorry, I, I can feel like I didn't answer the question about process. No. It was oh, was it? Yeah, because uh, I was gonna. Well, I want to talk more about myself. So. <laughs> And did you feel that uh, connection as well with Jordan? Yeah, time? it was like one of those lovely moments where you forget you're auditioning and you're just playing. And, you know, I was so grateful just to do the auditions, to play these characters, even for that hour that I got. You know, because I, I just love, I, I can't even talk about it without kind of getting emotional about it, but I just loved the writing. I loved the characters. And to get to, <laughs> I'm going to cry, but to, to get to play opposite somebody who, brings you alive, that's the greatest gift you can get as an actor. And we were so lucky to get so many incredible incredible, incredible actors on the show as day players and supporting, you know, like, yeah. just brilliant. And, you know, as far as the audition process for me, it was like I had to go in there kind of playing several characters. You know, and they'd be like, okay, cool, that one's done, so now be her. Like, All right, so I pull off this thing and I put on, like, some item of clothing that kind of got me in there mm -hmm. or, or helped me kind of start to feel that person and then and then it's just a matter of playing and being a kid again and just going yes you know saying i'm yes. a dog <laughs> i'm a dog yeah you're right I'm like, a horse. yeah exactly <laughs> which we all do as kids and then as adults we kind of go that's wrong and that's um insanity but as an actor you have to go to that insane place <laughs> yeah. so what we're really saying is that we are mentally ill people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get paid to be mentally ill <laughs> That was awesome. And you should mention as well that that's not even the, the finished clip. It's got to be color corrected and a few other things. But I, oh, I have so many questions. So the clones or genetic identicals are potentially being hunted. That's wild. Um, but I want to ask you, how do you how do you do that? Because you can tell obviously the voice, but also the mannerisms are different. So how do you, as an actor, prepare to do that? Like, what what's your process? Uh, uh, there's loads of things I did. I mean, uh, I'm I'm fascinated by people, by characters, and and that's always what draws me to a project. So. To, to get to do this was an insane dream and challenge. Um, for me, it was like tapping into, like I said, what, what makes us different? Why are we different from each other? How does one person's upbringing shape so much of who they are? How does their environment shape who they are? And uh, uh, I used music. I used music that I felt kind of resonated within the character or uh, was something they'd like to listen to or was some kind of rhythm that, that made me move differently, made me walk through the world differently. Um, I used dance a lot, I used animal work, um, and, uh, and basically looked at like, you know, how does this person see the world, what's their world view, and how does that change how they move around in the world? So, uh, you know, are they guarded because they've been hurt so much that they can't let themselves be hurt again? Are they so vulnerable that they put up walls of, ah, everything's good, you know what I mean? Like, what, what are the ways we defend ourselves? And that's... That psychology is fascinating to me, and so that was kind of how I, how I did this. And then just a sense of play, and a sense of like finding the voices, and working with the incredible writing, you know, where the characters are so alive on yeah. the page. Yeah. Your character Felix is awesome as well, he's a really great character. What, what was it like watching Tatiana, though, make that transition between those characters, and, and acting opposite different ones? Uh, sometimes challenging, some, sometimes very easy. Uh, easy because Pat's incredible and you know when, when she would go through the transformation and go in the, the hair and makeup trailer she'd go in you know I'd be having a scene with Sarah and she'd go in and what would come out of the hair and makeup trailer was not the person that I was just talking to so for me mentally it was very easy to differentiate the relationships the dynamic how much this person knew whether or not I liked them because I don't necessarily like all the clones Felix doesn't necessarily like all the clones um, and it, so it was, it's a little spooky actually sometimes. It, it's, it's like functional schizophrenia. It's very, um, 
or I suppose it wouldn't be schizophrenia, it would be uh, dissociative identity yeah. disorder, it, and it's not, but it, it, it seemed that way. It's, it's, a, little, it's, it's a little spooky. It's uh, wild. Uh, the, the illusion is shattered because the person can't maintain the accent or if it's inconsistent, and so, and then, um, you know, American Canadian actors trying to do UK dialect sometimes goes terribly wrong. And it, it did. And it did go, <laughs> it did. It went That's sometimes. What goes for. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah, certain mornings. But for, I didn't actually know what accent I was doing when I, for when, during the audition, uh, I came in with a northern accent. Because my experience with English accents really was like Coronation Street. <laughs> my mom had Coronation Street on, and I was like, oh, I guess that kind of is what. But you know, still working class, and then they said, no, no, it's closer to London, and so I, I rekeyed, I kind of retooled it, and um, but also found a way to sort of add this theatrical affectation, which I, just works. Whereas like Sarah is, um, she's like down in her chest, and she's and lower than that. She, she's a little bit lower than her chest, uh, and Felix is like, you know much more up here. I always say my lower back at the end of the nights would be so sore because he sort of lives in his upper back muscles, you know, he's, he's always craned up sort of irreverently and uh, it was so a little painful. I, my back would be tweaked but by the end of the I'm doing yoga, trying to like stretch. That's not funny. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Hot yoga or, or cold yoga? Uh, is there cold yoga? Regular yoga. Regular intermediate. In cold between. yoga would be really bad for you. Cold yoga would be horrible. Yeah. You could like rip something. Uh, I thought I saw an Ontario driver's license in the uh -huh. in the uh, <laughs> it's set in Toronto or in Ontario. Well, um, it's like it's not like it pretends to be any like it's it, like we show a lot of Toronto, but it's not. Um, so it's it's like, sort of its own city. So it's like Gotham. Point where they didn't say it was Toronto for quite a while, but like, yeah. they went to Timmy's. Yeah, so like, we talk about like, I think we reference like Markham and Scarborough, but it's kind of not like we're like, I'm going to go to the CN Tower. Like we're not, it's not super, right. you know, it's kind of its own world. It's its own city. And now yeah. um, we don't have Canadian money either, do we? No, I don't think so. No, so it's, we're really trying to kind of, it's, but which, and you know, to the show's testament, maybe not necessarily Toronto, but not the United States no. either. No, it's Which is kind of cool. It, um, but... You just kind of accept it. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it perhaps a city in our minds? I think you're right. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Probably terribly wrong. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, you had your hand up there. Yeah. My sister just asked me if you ever feel left out because you don't get to go watch Friends with your co-stars because you're playing so many roles that you're in basically every scene. Yeah. <laughs> I had one day off the entire shoot, uh, which was crazy. So yeah, I, I didn't have a life outside of Orphan Black. So the whole thing feels like a total dream. I mean, I don't have any context for it because it was my whole yeah. life, you know. Um, I felt like, uh, well, no. I mean, I got to work with everybody. And I, yeah, I was pretty spoiled. You know what I mean? I got to work with insane actors and on incredible characters. But yeah, sometimes I would like, can I just sit down and watch like Downton Abbey right now, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jordan, did you make it part of your job to update Tatiana in terms of the goings on in the world? Well, I, Fringe ended pretty fast, and like I, I would have had to start from the beginning, and like they were just closing up their fifth season. I think I started. We started to talk about Breaking Bad though, because yeah. I got into that too, pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, so I like I, I, I told her like a little bit. Um, I'm pretty sure that like something happened. I'm sure something happened. Yeah. You like told me what you were cooking a lot. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I was like, so I brought that. Like, so last night I made this. I didn't invite you, but I made this amazing. Oh my god, I forgot about that. I, I didn't invite her because I was worried that I would, she'd feel obligated to come, and I knew she was tired. Exhausted. Yeah. And so I didn't, but then I can see in retrospect how it looked really mean. <laughs> Well, I actually heard that you, you love to cook, Jordan. So if you had Tatiana over for a dinner party, what would you make her? Oh, boy. I know. Um, I, I, she really likes... She's all about... Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you like a box of the most insane chocolate. Oh, yeah. Well, see, I, I'm going... I'm leaning toward desserts, because, like, any time I looked at her, she was always, like... She had a cake in one hand. <laughs> 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 I can have both in my mouth at the same time. I know what desserts I would feed her. Um, I do probably a, I do a chocolate pie. I probably do chocolate pie. Chocolate she likes pie. chocolate. I, I think I probably do like steak or something. Oh yeah. I do sure. like a nice filet, filet mignon. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah, I would do that. And I'd wrap it in bacon. You eat bacon, don't you? Yeah, I'd wrap it in bacon. I'm really sorry to any vegetarians. I was vegan for a year, so I can say that, right? You're fine. I'm yeah. fine.